So let's have a look now at the settings for dynamic input. Like all the other drafting settings on the status bar, we can move over with the pointer, right click, and there's our shortcut menu. We can see that it's enabled and we can use icons, but I'm going to go to settings. We're now in the drafting settings dialog box again, and you can see now that we're in the dynamic input tab. Now I switch everything on normally. I don't tend to switch anything off in dynamic input. So I enable pointer input like so. That gives me coordinate readouts, dynamic prompts like that. Dimension input shows an example there of dimension input. Enable dimension input where possible. So when you're drawing lines, arcs and circles, it will give you distances and angles like we've seen before in the previous examples. What I also do is make sure that the command prompting and the command input is near the crosshairs and I show additional tips with command prompting as well. I always switch all of these on because then all you're doing is looking at the crosshair, you're not looking down at the command line at all. Let's have a look at the drafting tooltip appearance. So as you can see in the model tabs there, there's my distance, there's my angle. In the layout, it's obviously a white background. So they change it so the text is grey. Now I can change those colours if I want to. I don't have to at all. And transparency, I don't tend to change either. The size, I leave it as it is. And what you can do here, you can override OS settings for all drafting tooltips. So what that means is you can basically override your operating system settings, in this case Windows, for all your drafting tooltips. Or you can use settings only for dynamic input tooltips if you want to by clicking that button there. I normally leave it at the default like that. I don't tend to change anything. I'll OK that now. And then what I'll do is I'll OK that again. And that's all my dynamic input settings set. So if we go back to the example again, what I'll do is I'll go to the line command over here. And if I draw a line, as you can see, the dynamic input prompts me for the first point of my line. Now I can go and use a snap like that, or I can type in the coordinates, as you can see on the dynamic input. Read your command line at the bottom of the screen. You can see the line command is also specified first point on the command line. So I can use either input method. The preferred method is dynamic input, and that is what I will be using during this entire AutoCAD electrical course. So I click there like that on that endpoint snap. Dynamic input tells me it's an endpoint snap. And as I move now, you can see, look, I can draw that line at any distance at any angle. So what I'll do there is I'll put a distance in, say 1.5 in the distance box, press the tab, that tabs me to the angle, type in 30 as the angle, press tab again just to confirm that's gone in, press enter, enter again to finish the line command. That line is 1.5 long. And that angle from the horizontal line there to that line there is 30 degrees. That's how easy it is to use dynamic input and set up the settings so that they work to your advantage.